Join us for Sunday worship service with Faith Temple Ncog. In Warsaw, Virginia. Our pastor is Bishop Forrest Nance Jr. Join us on Zoom every Sunday at 11 a.m. Listen on the go on your favorite streaming platforms, available on Spotify, Apple, Google, YouTube, Anchor, Overcast, Spreaker, Good Pods, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Podbean, Castbox, Podyssey, and many more. Online giving through GiveWithFi.com. Type in Faith Temple and Cog to donate. Like and subscribe to our Facebook, Instagram, Thread, and Twitter pages at FTNFCOG and our YouTube page at youtube.com slash at FTNFCOG. For more information about Faith Temple National Fellowship Churches of God, you can visit our website at www.ftncog.org. Truly, we give God all the glory and all the praise. Amen. For he is a good God. We thank God. Amen. Elder Wright, we thank to see you this evening. All wide eyed, ready to go. Right out of the bushy tape. Amen. So <laughs> we thank God. Amen. That, uh, we just got, got back home safe. Everything's all right. And we are a little fired up after coming out of revival down there. Amen. We are excited about what God has got planned for us. In, in this year, amen. We're going to open up in prayer. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. And we want to give you all the glory and all the praise, Father. For you are the almighty God. You are our maker. You are our creator. And we are your vessels. You molded us and shaped us, Father God. God, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for this great salvation that you've given us. We want to thank you for your son. We want to thank you for the Holy Spirit, Father. Father, oh God, we just thank you so much, God. But we know now, God, that we cannot do anything without you. And we thank you, Lord God, again for this salvation. Father, we ask you now, God, let the Holy Spirit have its way in here. Lord, use this vessel to speak your word, teach your word, open up the understandings of your word, Father, to us, Lord. Let us increase our faith by hearing this word, God. Lord, touch their minds, Lord. Let their word be re mind be renewed new by the word, Father. Oh, God, let them put that word in their hearts. They want to govern their lives accordingly, Father. God, let just have your way in here. Have your way in this Bible study. God, just we just ask you, Lord, those that are in the feeling ill in their bodies, those that are wrestling with the, for some affliction, God, we pray for them right now, that they will hear a word, and they'll know that by his stripes we're here, healed, Father God. They'll hear a word, God, that promise them by the blood, God, that they are healed, Father, in the name of Jesus. We truly thank you, God. We truly thank you. The cancer has no hold, hallelujah, over your people, Father. Blood pressure has no hold over your people, Father. Diabetes has no hold over your people, Father. No infirmity has a right to be in your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we just ask you to do it right now, God. Let them wake up and realize the benefits that they have in the blood, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bless right now, God. Oh, my Lord, I call on you, God, for you're the only one that can do it. Ah, Father God, you're the only one that can turn the situation around in their lives, Father. Through your word, your word promises, God, oh, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father. So we're standing on your word, God. Father God, hallelujah. And we have faith and we believe that your word cannot come out void, come back void once it's been sent out. And we're sending out your word now, God. We're sending out your word down to strengthen the saints, God. Let them abide in your word, Father God. And that word and you abide in them, Father. Hallelujah. That they may ask anything in the name of Jesus, Lord. And they know how it shall be done. Father, we thank you and we bless your name right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Just remember, remember, we are talking about in this series how to identify ourselves with Christ. How to identify ourselves with Christ. We talked about how to ask for forgiveness of sin, how to confess our sins. We talked about how to crucify the old man, hallelujah, and all that it takes in the cardinal mind. And we're talking now, we talked about the faith in his name. 
We talked about the faith in his blood. And now we're going to pick up and we're going to talk about faith in the word. Hallelujah. Faith in his word. Hallelujah. Uh, my God, hallelujah. And we have understanding that the Bible is God's word. And if some don't believe that, hallelujah, if, if this whole series is, uh, is, doesn't mean anything to you. But you have to believe that this word, that the Bible is the word of God. The scripture said that this, the writers of the Bible were moved by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. It's a scripture. I'm trying to think. It just popped up in my head. I'm trying to think. Of it. But the scripture said that the word hallelujah, is a two-edged sword. And it cuts. Hallelujah. It cuts uh, down to the bone, separating the moral, the soul, and the life. Amen. Let me get that scripture. Amen. I'm, I'm messing it up. Hallelujah. Uh, Elder, can you get that for me? Uh, hallelujah. I know I got it. Yeah. Anyway, so you got to understand that the word of God is alive. It's not just a normal book that you read. This word is alive. Because the scripture said you can it got to go forth when you send it out. It cannot come back forth. So right there means that word can go somewhere and it's going to accomplish where you sent it and it's not going to come back void. But you have to believe. You got to have faith that this is the word of God. That this Bible is the word of God. Now if you believe that, then you got to understand when God says something, yes, that's what it means. Hallelujah. That's what God means. Did you get it for me? Yes, it's Hebrews 4 and 12. I knew it, did. man. I just, I'm just too, just scripture too far in front of me. 4 and 12. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what 4 and 12 says. Hebrews 4 and 12. I'll let you get to it. Hebrews 4 and 12. That's in the New Testament. 4 and 12. Hebrews. Hebrews. New oh, yeah. Hebrews 4 and 12. Toward the back, before James. And it reads as such. For the word of God is quick. Now, if it's just a book, and you're reading a book, no book words say the word of God is quick. This word is quick. And powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, I'm going to say the whole lot in that scripture right there, saints. First of all, it's alive. God's word is alive. God's word said he, it would do what God sends it out to do. When you are in Christ and the spirit of God is in you, you can send, you have the authority, hallelujah, to send God, to quote God's word. And when you quote that word and send it out, it has to, it says it's quick, it's powerful. Oh my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, my God, is sharper than any two-edged sword. That tells me that word is powerful. That word is, is, is going to do what God said. That's why you got to have faith in it, that this word is alive. It's not like any other word or any other book that you read. This word is alive. Look where the second part of that, down to the last part. It says, it's discerner. It will discern the thoughts and intent of the heart. His word will discern the thoughts and intent of the heart. This word is alive. It knows your thought. It can discern your thoughts and intents of the heart. So it's not an ordinary word. I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Faith in this word is not an ordinary word. This is not an ordinary word. This is God's word. God's word. And God's word 
is true. God's word cannot come back void. It must accomplish what it's been sent out to do. Just that we have faith in the blood, there's healing in the blood, there's cleansing in the blood, we, we, they're washed in the wild sins away in the blood. We got to believe that. And to believe that, the word of God is one that told us that. So we got to understand that you got to have faith in this word to believe that the blood cleanses you of your sins. I'm, I'm, I want you, I'm trying to get you, you got to understand that there many saints are leaving their blessings behind because they don't believe they 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 can read it they really don't understand or they really don't try to use and believe that the word of god is true it is true you don't have to have afflictions you don't have, you're going to go through some things but they don't, they, there's nothing you can call got the word of god that can rebuke that if if if, if no way in here did i read that jesus ever got sick in the word of God. They haven't read it. I haven't found it, but if somebody else finds it, they can show it to me. So if the same blood that runs through Jesus now, spiritual blood is running through us now, made us new creatures, then why we don't believe what God's word said? It comes, do I feel a symptoms of cold sometimes? Yes, I feel it. And immediately I rebuke that. Immediately I, I claim the blood, I'm washed in the blood. I'm covered in the blood. I know by his stripes I'm healed. I know this because that's a firm that they can't and not stay here with me. You got to believe with the word of God. Everybody got their measure of faith. But you got to understand this word of God is a lie. It's not dead. It is a lie. Look at uh, the early part of Hebrews. That's why I told you I was read there in the scripture. You know what I'm saying? The early part of uh, verse 4, chapter uh, chapter 4 of Hebrews, and reading at verse 1. Look what God's word said. Let us therefore fear, least a promise being left us of entering into the, his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. It's God's word now, having faith in God's word. Look what the Hebrew writer said. He said, let us therefore fear. I want you to highlight that word fear. Fear, a, unless a, a promise being left of us entering into his rest. We should be, look at this word. I don't want to leave no promise behind. I got to believe, accept what God's word is. I got to hear what God's word is. There's a promise that I can that I don't want to hear. So we can leave promises behind. We heard it and we don't believe it and we leave it behind. The writer, the writer here says, therefore fear. Therefore fear. Least a promise be left behind. We leave things behind because we don't believe. We don't, we don't believe God. Any of you should seem come short of it. Now that's talking about your salvation there. We can believe, confess in our mouth, but if you never believe it, you don't never receive the, and get sanctified in the Holy Ghost and, and, and five baptized, saints, you are leaving things there behind. And you, you, you're sacrificing your salvation. Look at the, the next verse said, for unto us, was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. How many times we have heard preachers preach over and over and over again? Huh, how to do this? Believe God. God wants you to do this. God wants you to have this. God will ensure you. He will meet your every need. God gives you the desires of your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things be added unto you. All these things are God's word, and it takes faith to activate that. Look what they say. They heard the preacher preaching God's word. They heard the preacher preaching, but the preacher can preach. But if no faith believes that, you drop it right there. You leave it behind. Look what it says. Did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You're hearing the word Sunday and Tuesday. 
over and over again. But if you're not putting faith and believing God, you are what? You should be fearful, least you what? Mess around and lose your salvation. Because you're not studying the word of God. You're not uh, 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 applying the word of God to you. You, you, I'm saved, but we, we're finding out that salvation, being saved from, from your sins, takes more to get sanctified and, and baptized in fire. It's, it's a, you got to step on into it. You got to continue to seek God. That's what the word says. That's what his word, the word over and over and over, tell us that we got to seek God. Man should always pray. Always pray. Why, why we can't understand his word is plain and simple. <laughs> if the, what Mark say, if you ask anything in my name, whatsoever, whosoever, ask anything in my name, it, it, I'll pray to the Father that you get it, that it's done. If you can believe it, if you can believe it, if you can believe it, you heard the word, apply your faith to it, and that's where we've been falling up short. We're not applying our faith. We hear the word, but we don't believe God's word. God said this, and God said that. But you you hear it. The preacher preaching now say, repent, come out of your sin, separate yourselves. You hear it, but you won't apply it. But you still believe that I'm saved. No, you're not saved. You're not born again. If you don't apply God's word because you heard it and you don't believe it by faith, you're not going to apply it into your life. And I told you it, the, the word of God is alive. It's not just a regular book. This word is live. It's quick. It's powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It will go out and do what it's set, when it's sent out to do. No other word we I know can do that. Man's word don't do that. He got to ask somebody to do this. Or he got to say doing that. God's don't, word don't have to ask nothing. God's word just, bam, it's quick. It's powerful. It will go out and do what it said be done. Needs to be done. But we got to understand our relationship with God. To be identified as Christian, we got to hear the word and apply the word to our lives. You're not identifiable if you just said you heard the word but you ain't changed none. You you heard I, 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 you heard the preacher say this, so now you saying it, but that's not by faith. You you heard a, the, the the missionary say that you 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 got need to be washed in the blood, so you say I'm washed in the blood, but you don't have faith that you know that you are washed in the blood. If you know that Jesus Christ sacrificed God sent His only begotten Son to die for you. That you could have come out and be born again to come be rescued from the wages of sin, you would change your life. You wouldn't want to go back into sin. My God, hallelujah. 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 Boy, hallelujah. You don't have no peace. You don't have no rest. Look what the next verse say. For we which have believed do not enter into rest. Do enter into rest. Excuse me. But we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. You don't have no rest. Those that believe it can understand that everything was finished to enter into his rest. You have peace. You have, you have rest. Peace for rest. But you caught up in what you want to do and not what God wants you to do. That's why your work, your work you're, you're going through all the motions. You're still in the cardinal way. You're still thinking the way the cardinal thinking. I got to do this. No, if you have faith, you have the rest of God. You have the peace of God. How does faith come? How do we get, get more faith? Faith coming by what? Hearing the word of God. Faith coming by hearing the word of God. You know the really importance of faith? You don't have faith, you can't please God. <laughs> that's what the scripture says. 
go go over there. You be in the book of Hebrews now. Without faith. Hallelujah. Uh, Hebrews 11 chapter, verse number six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. You don't pick your Bible up until Tuesday, till Sunday, but you want your faith. I believe. You don't believe because the Bible tells you you got to seek him. The Bible says you got to pray always. The Bible says you got to understand the word. Read your desires in the word of God. After you heard the word, but you're not activating any faith to the word. You have to activate faith in God's word. If God's word say, thou shall not, then you can't. Now, we're all quick on to say, well, thou shall not uh, uh, kill, thou shall not steal. Well, we know them the moral laws. We, we can all understand it. But what about the, the one that get the Christians all the time, the, the so-called children of God? Thou shall not covet. Thou shall not have idolatry. Thou shall not have commit idolatry. I'm not saying adultery. I'm saying idolatry. You shouldn't have no other God before God. Hmm. Hmm. Huh, I heard the word of God, but I, God, I, I don't know how I got to do this on my own. I got to, I got to make this happen. What you doing? You going against God. You're letting your work, trying to work things out in your way of thinking. If you walk by faith and not by sight, then I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to walk it anyway. Like I told uh, uh, me and my wife, we didn't know how we were going to get down there, but we made preparation to go. And God said, make it, just go. And I told y'all, I, I was, uh, it came, came out the fast, and God had gave me Isaiah, the uh, uh, third of chapter, when he said, uh, I give you waters, I mean, bread of, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, bread of, <laughs> uh, let me go, huh? Let me, let me turn to it. Isaiah, the third chapter. I don't want nobody saying I'm making up stuff. But when would you see the word itself? God gave me this coming out of the fast. Didn't know how I was going to get down to this uh, revival. Didn't know how, where, where the funds were going to come from, where, where this was going to come from. Hallelujah. But God made a way. Hallelujah. Uh, in Isaiah, the... Okay, now. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't use it. Do you Waters of uh, affliction, but I read uh, huh. no it says anybody got it? I know y'all got these smartphones that tell you everything. Well, anyway, I can't find it, but maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, it's uh, anyway, I came Isaiah out of 20. You know, huh? Oh, Isaiah 30, verse 20. 30. 30, verse 20. All right. Yeah. He said, oh, and the Lord, and when I came out of the fast, this is what the Lord gave. He gave me this in the fast. You know, when you go on, you, you dog talk to us. He gave me this, and he said, though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the waters of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers, and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. 
And that's what God gave me. So when that verse, when I came out of fast, that verse that hit me, I had the I had the voice telling me, this is the path. This is the way. Walk in it. And all I could do was tell my wife, this is how we got to do it. We got to go forward. We got to go forward. And Lord, God made a way. We went down and we came back. Hallelujah. So we, you, you got to believe what God's word say. I could have easily said, well, I'm going to call the man. I got too much going on. I got house have this and problems up here and problems down there. I, I just got too much. I ain't got no transportation. It's easy to give in to the world when you're looking at it with your eyes. But when you walk by faith and faith in the word of God, God will give you the word. He still did not give me how to get out of it. He said, you got to walk. You will hear the voice behind the spirit of God inside of me is telling me, this is the way. Walk in it. And I'm saying, well, I can't see the way, but I'm going to listen to the word of God and I'm going to walk that way. And God made a way. It ain't always God going to give you the answers, but because you believe and have faith, you know the word of God and you have faith in that word, God will make, make things, the word cannot come back void. God will make it happen. But you got to believe, you hear the word, but you got to apply faith in that word. And the saints today are not, they hear everything else. Man can say you got uh, COVID-19 and everybody got COVID-19 and dying. But the word of God in 91, Psalm 91, God gave me, said, it's, you see it, but it shall not come nigh thy place. I had to believe that. You see it, but it can't, it can't touch you. It can't touch you. Don't answer that. Uh, COVID all around me. I, I, it couldn't touch me. You understand? I had to apply faith in the word. I believe what God's word says. That's why God said, you got to wake up. The saints stop listening to hearing the word. You hearing the word, but you got to apply faith and believe what God's word says. We can tell the seasons now. Uh, I'm trying to get into all of but I'm trying to give you an illustration. We see the times have changed according to the word of God. Everybody say, well, man, it's getting, man, this wind, we're in this, we we're in this phase, we in that phase, we in this and all that. People are saying that, even though the weather, man, we in March and we at 75 degrees. We just, man, things are just going. See it. They're saying it out their mouth. But what did the word of God say when you see these signs? But you ain't changing. You don't believe that. You hear the word of God, the preacher preaching, but you're not changing your lifestyle because you know what things are happening. God said he's going to come soon to come, but you're not changing your lifestyle. You hear the word, but you're not applying faith because if you apply faith, you say, oh, well, things have changed in there. I think I got to be, as my uncle uh, elder, <laughs> elder Proctor said, you can't be getting ready. You got to be ready. Because if you're getting ready, that means you ain't ready. And he's not taking nobody that ain't ready. It's boom, bam, it's hat, all gone. It's over. You, 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 it ain't time for to put the socks and shoes on because it's over. By the time you get all that done, and you, it's all gone. It's bam. You got to believe God's word, saints, and you got to apply faith in that word. Uh, apostle gave us the scripture over there in Hebrews, still in Hebrews now, this, the uh, second chapter on doing this revival. And, and it just, and, and it was helping me because I'm studying the, uh, in this series that we're talking about faith in God's word. And the apostle read that scripture and I was like, man, this thing is getting real. I mean, it is real, not getting real. He said, uh, second chapter of Hebrews. Second chapter of Hebrews. Verse first. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, least at any time we shall not what should let them slip. <laughs> If, if, if uh, you're not making sure you're secured in something, it can't slip. 
you walking on ice. You 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 make sure you get your feet before you, you your, everything is moved before you take the first step. If you ain't seen slip inside, you try you know, every step is secure before you take this first one. If you're not thinking about that and part of you knowing it, you just walk out there and slip and fall. This is a, if we don't take heed to the word of God, we're gonna let our salvation slip. You got to have faith in the God. God don't want anybody. He don't want you to backslide. But do people backslide? Yes, people backslide. Because they see better things with their eyes than they hear in the word of God. They see the world off in all this. They see the world has this. I'm coming home today, right in the first big board, the, the lottery, 700 and some million dollars. Play on Tuesdays and Fridays. Cost you two dollars. Better on the bullboard. Only two dollars you can win seven hundred and some million dollars, almost a billion dollars. Now, that is temptation. But I had the word of God said, "My father owned cattle, thousand cattle on a thousand hills." My father. That's why you got to know who your father is. My father will supply me everything I need according to his riches. If you're looking for riches down here, then you already got your eyes set on the wrong thing. Your eyes should be set on spiritual things. Your eyes should be set on Jesus. Your eyes should be set on what God's will is. Faith in his word, it, you're going to let it slip because you're now tending to more things. The things you think are better than that. God's word said the, the righteous are scarcely going to make it in. Now, I know I'm over here and I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm giving y'all the negatives instead of the positive, but sometimes you got to have no, no reality in the negative. Can, can, you can end up in hell because you don't believe. If God says you got to love me before you love anybody else and you push out loving somebody else more than God, are you wrong? The scripture said you're wrong. The scripture said you got to leave your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister. You got you, you got you got to go. So you can't put God second to nothing. Some say you you, you your family it's it's God they they got this quote God family and then anything else. It's God. You can put family before God. That's where you hear the word, but you don't apply faith to it. Because if you apply faith to it, you're not going to let nothing get in front of you. If you apply faith to it, when God said, uh, uh, all these things are not going to make it into the heaven. <laughs> to see the kingdom of Jesus, right? I'm over there in uh, Galatians, I think it was, the fifth chapter. And it lists a whole lot of things. They're not going to see revelings or... Uh, 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 all these sins of the flesh. They should, anybody practicing doing anything shall not see the kingdom of Jesus. Shall not. But you read it. Faith, you don't have to believe in that. But it ain't going to change. You can't get up there and say, well, God, I, I no, it says you shall not. As, as, as they were uh, putting, installing the de uh, elder, uh, then one of the things on it said, you got to show the, the women. You got to show the young men. You, you got to teach this. You got to teach preaching and, and correct them according to the word of God. Now, you, you, if you don't live up to that, you don't heard the word. If you don't have faith and, and apply faith to that, you, you, you just were just, just like any other sinner. God gave you a charge. You're saying, well, I don't got to do it this way. It, everything got to be done by the Spirit. The Spirit, I didn't just pick this series to teach on uh, identifying with Christ. God gave me this. I, I would have gone past all, all this, but I got to go down one step at a time. I know some of y'all probably forgot all about how to confess your faults so that you get, can get forgiven of your sins. How do, you, how do I have faith in the blood? And we 
just came out of that. How do I have faith uh, in his name? We, we studied that already. How many of you went back and looked at your notes and, and, and earnestly seeking the spirit to give you understanding? Or you just heard it and just went on out. No faith was applied to it. Faith has to be applied. Saints, I, 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 just, I don't want to, I'm not trying to preach uh, fire and brimstone, but I'm telling you, you got to hear that you got to need to start hearing the word of God and applying faith to it. Times are vastly changing. We have too many doctrines out here about Jesus Christ and what Jesus did and what Jesus ain't do. We had and how Jesus sinned and everything. They got so many doctrines out here that, that you got to know what this word say for yourself. It's all right for me to, I told you one time before, somebody told me uh, when Isaiah committed adultery, he was uh, uh, went into this prophetess and and, and the prophetess, so uh, again, you, if you read the word, that was Isaiah's wife. They argued because they never went deep to find out this. They're going by what, what, what somebody told them. It's all right. It ain't all right. God said it's wrong. Yeah, David got David, got, but God trusted out and corrected David. And David repented. David repented. And you see the, the song that he went all through that, but God forgive me. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm not sinning against you. He repented. He sincerely repented. What we say, oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. And never apply. No, no, you ain't you're gonna go right back and do it again. What we talk about, uh, beginning confessing our faults and confessing our sins. Remember, we talked about that in identifying with Christ. That was the first thing we talked about. Talked about the crucifixion of the old flesh. You gotta, you gotta go back and look at your notes. Faith in God's word. Gotta know God's the good and the bad. Everybody want the preachers preach the good, don't they? Make you feel good. Oh, money coming. Oh, I'm going to have this. I'm going to pay my bills. God going to pay my bills. Go, oh, God going to work away from me. I'm going to get a promotion on my job. I'm going to have all this. That man, that's just going to be all good. What about the Bible said that you first got to go over to John, the uh, the 15th chapter, real quick. The 15th chapter. Yeah, that's talking about the Bible. Yeah, 15th chapter. Look at verse 7. It says, if, the word if, ye abide in me. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. If, this word if is in there. If you abide in him and his word abide in you, what is it? Ye shall ask. We want to hurry up quick to put our faith on the last part of that. Ask what you want, and they have it. But you've got to know the word, the whole word. You can't just take a little piece of the word and apply it to your life. He said, if you abide in him and his word abide in you, then you have the right. Then you have the, the right to ask me. <laughs> what did he say? He said, then... uh." Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If you're abiding in his word, word, and he's and, you, and his word is abiding in you, my God, you're gonna have rest, you're gonna have true assurance that everything you need that morning when you wake up. Hallelujah. You have the reassurance in the word of God says he loaded me up daily with my benefits. Huh? My God, hallelujah. That word will give you life every day. You don't look, have to pray for this. And I don't have to pray for that. God is going to give supply me my need. But you got to have faith in God's word. This word is quick. This word is powerful. What I read earlier, it is a discerner of your what? Intents of your heart. It can discern what you, <laughs> why you really praying like that. What did, what did James say about that, saints? <laughs> y'all be all ready about James. James said, James, you know what he said? You pray amiss. 
can go to James, the first chapter. James said what? Uh, da, 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 da. But let him ask, uh, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. That giveth all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Look what he said that next verse. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. God heal me. How many times I, I probably ask the elders, how many times they lay hands on people and they say, I'm healed. And they go, oh yeah, I, I, feel, I feel the anointing. It healed me. I'm healed. I'm healed. And you go back to them two days later. Oh, man. I, that, that pray for me. My leg hurting again. Hold up. Hold up. God, what I tell you about the transfusion of the blood? You don't go. This ain't no place where you got to go every every day or every three days and get a, a, a new transfusion of the blood of Jesus. If Jesus, you got the transfusion in you, how did that blood runs through you? The spiritual blood I'm talking about now because this is a spiritual walk. This blood is walking through you. It shouldn't be coming. Once you get a transfusion of Jesus, you shouldn't be coming back no more. And if the elder laid your hands on you and you believe what the word of God said, if any of you are sick, among you called the elders, and the elders came, and he laid hands on you, and according to your faith, you were healed. That's right. According to your faith, you are healed. That's why I count you back on the second day. And you say, oh, I need prayer again. No, 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 no. You got to have faith that God's word does it. It accomplished what it's been sent out to do. Can't come back. The word is that you, 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 you're healed. But you got to believe what God's word says, saints. Don't get all excited about because your salvation rests on this. Is Jesus coming back? Yes, Jesus is coming back. Everybody said, yeah, he coming back. He coming back. He coming back. He coming back. They've been saying that when I was a little child. And now I'm 67, 68 years old. He coming back. He coming back. But I read in the scripture where it's getting closer and closer. He closer now than he was 20 years ago. He closer now than he was 40 years ago. He closer now than he was 60 years ago. He's soon to come back. He's soon to, what the scripture asks, uh, will Jesus come back? Will he find faith? Oh, wait a minute. He won't have fine faith. Is he, how, how is he not going to have fine faith if the Christians are here? He comes back, will he find faith? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Do I really believe God's word? Do you really believe God's word, saints? And only you can answer that. But you got to believe this because you and, and, and do this that your salvation rests on this. That you don't let this slip. It, it, <laughs> what I tell you about uh I told y'all that one Sunday. Me and Elder White, uh, my pops, uh, father were talking, and we talked about the spot. I looked down here. Everything on me is white. Right, no, no spots. I can see everything in the front of me. Ain't no spots. But then I turn around and look in the mirror, and there's a little spot back there that cost me. That's cost me my, my salvation. That one little spot. Because I didn't want to address it. Because I, I believe God going to let that slide. God knows my heart. Well, when he starts separating the sheep from the goat, and he tell you go over there, and they, they, God knows your heart. You're a goat. <laughs> and you're going to have to make it on over to the right. Thanks, God. You, you, you hear the word of God every Sunday or where have you. And you got to apply faith to believe that this word is true. People are not going to get in heaven accidentally. People are going to go to hell <laughs> accidentally. Because they're not going to take this word seriously. And they think they oh, say, I'm all right. People, people believe, I ain't going to say, people believe this, that there's having parties down in hell. They believe that. Got what's it? What how do they think? What they got? Barbecue chicken 
and ribs and everything on the grill and, and the music blasting and everything. They, they just having a good old time. They believe that. But you go back to this word of God. What did the word say that's down there? Wow. I ain't read no party time. I ain't read no when nobody have no food eat. I have a man down there said, hey, tell somebody to come back with a dip their finger in some water and just touch my lips. I have him complaining that it's too hot down there. I have somebody telling me that it's a bed of worms down there and it's eating on me and it's fire burning me all the time. Ain't no party time down there. I, I, I looked on the, the uh, on on the I think it's YouTube, but it was on my Facebook, and I'm not trying to look on Facebook. Anyway, I would look on Facebook, and they had a New Year's. This is back in January, and they had a New Year's thing, a New Year's wash night. That's what it was, the third and third first. And they, they, man, that church looked like a nightclub. They had the fog, they had the jumping around, they were doing all kind of boogie woogie doogie dancing. They were doing everything, the music playing, they jumping all around. It looked like a nightclub. God wasn't getting no glory in that. Everything we do is trying to be glorifying God. That's what his words say. God don't get no glory when we out there jumping around like 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 <laughs> and, and and dancing and doing everything. He's not getting no glory on that because he got to have a sanctified person. He got to have a holy person. He got to have somebody that trusts God, that worshiping God. New Year's Eve, watch, New Year's Eve, watch night service. What was the time when we came and fasted? That was the day that they, they said, well, we're going to shut in and we're going to be here for New Year's Eve. When God bring in the new year, we're going to be in prayer. We're going to be reading the scripture because we want to be ready to know God move. Now it's a party time on New Year's Eve. You're just like the world. <laughs> and God said there's going to be a separation from the world. But if you don't believe what God's word say, you'll continue to do that kind of stuff. You don't believe God's word say you can't... You, Cardinality is enmity against God. But what's cardinality? Well, cardinality is the way we were, the way of the world thinking. And that's enmity towards God. You got to be spiritual minded. Well, I ain't no preacher. I ain't, it didn't say. It says those that are led by the spirit are what? Sons of God. It didn't say preacher. Didn't say elder, didn't say missionary. Said, if you are led by the Spirit, ye are the sons of God. That's faith in the word. See, I, you got to believe what God's word say. Say God is not going to change because he loved you so much. No, he, he loves you, yes. He, he shows us grace. He shows us mercy. But he ain't going to, he can't go against what his word say. You can't get in. Because you got you got problems. You're not saved. You're not born again. Faith in his word tells you that you're not going to go. He can't go against his word. This word is the truth right here. This word is the truth. And I know I didn't get all in the, in, in, in the faith uh, thing. What I got? 15 minutes. Okay. All right. All right. Uh -huh. I talk about the, the thing. Faith in his word. You got to believe every word in this Bible. Every word. Every word. Go with me now. If you, if any of y'all elders out there want to say something, y'all can jump in. Second Corinthians 1 and 20, saints. Second Corinthians 1 and 20. Bishop. Yes. Um, salvation comes by hearing. Yes. And hearing the word of God. Faith comes by, what the scripture said, faith. Comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Right. So, as a child of God, if your father tells you something, you should be able to hear him, shouldn't you? Yes. 
and, and you got not just only can hear it, you got it written and right. And <laughs> so when when the father tell you don't, don't, and the father right. tell you do, do. And if you say you're the child of God, you've been born of the father, then don't question his word. His word says, does and so don't. So, well, you know, the preacher it ain't about the preacher. It's about your daddy. It's all about your daddy. It ain't about the preacher. The preacher just a messenger. And so many people say, well, you're doing the same. You do. You look what you do. It ain't about what I do. I'm standing on my head. Don't worry about that. You know, make sure you don't get stood on your head. My thing is that, you know, people say that they believe, but they haven't heard the word of God. They haven't heard from their father. And the father tells them, say, well, I'm telling you, don't believe it. And if he heard his father saying something to him, they should believe it. I know we done told a lot of lies to our children like from Santa Claus on up. Hallelujah, God. And I, I think that that's one of the reasons hard for a lot of people to believe is because we done told them too much about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. Great, Bishop. Whatever the said, you're right. If, if you think about it, what bunny runs around in their age? It come Peter Cottontail. <laughs> All right, look. First Corinthians, what did I tell you? First Corinthians, second Corinthians, one and twenty. <laughs> one and twenty. Look what it says. Now, this is this is for the if you got to believe God's word. For the promises of God, for all the promises of God in him are yea. Wait a minute. I don't know how many promises are in here. I read a book sometime, and some man said it was over a thousand some promises in here. I haven't read all. I don't write them all down, but I got scriptures that we, that he give me that I guess a promise. And when he give me a promise, that scripture, I, all these promises, I believe that if it's in God's word, that's a promise for me. He says all the promises, all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen. If you got faith in God, hearing God's word, you heard it and you got to apply faith to it. As the other prophet said, if he say no, apply faith to it and don't do it. If he said yea, apply faith to it and be obedient to it, even though you don't know how. You just got to say, yes, I'm going to, this is all I got. It, it, God says, wait right here. He said, wait on me. Well, all I can do is wait on me. They, they get me to, wait on God. That's all God told you to do, wait on me. And I'm going to fix it for you. How many times we got an illustration on David? David go, shall I go up? David, God said, nah. Wait till I go by in the Marlboro. You see the Marlboro trees whistling. Then that's when I want you to go. The enemy is here now. David, I, uh, no, you just wait, David. Wait on me. David waited. It's the same thing we got to do. Apply faith. I'm trusting God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to apply faith to what his words say. Because I know all his promises in him are yea, yea and amen. I heard the word. His word is true. His word is a spiritual sword. What did Jesus, how did Jesus fight the devil when he came out of the uh, fast? 30 day fast. How did Jesus fight? He didn't, he, he, he just said, man, it's written, man. It's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. He, had, he knew God's word and he had faith in God's word. It's written, thou shalt not. It's written. I got to trust God. Satan, come attack us. I got to trust what God said. This is the path. Stay in it. And I had to stay in that path. 
I could have warned it all, and my and, and, and my not, and it wouldn't have got the, the 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 blessings from God. But because I stayed in it, didn't see how, but I had to go with what the word is going to do. I had faith in His word. That's the same thing we had to do. You heard the word of God, as Elder Prophet just said. You heard it, and you got to trust God. We're, we're, we're famous to add a little more stuff to the to God's word name. Well, I know, I, I know if you don't heal me, I know it ain't God's will. It ain't God's will. Wait a minute. It, well, how is it not God's will? God, it, it, was it God's will for Lazarus to die? Yeah. Can he go to sleep? <laughs> Is it God's will that you get sick and die? If you don't have faith to apply in his word and don't know his word, then you're going to die. Now, we I'm not saying, let me get this right now. Everybody's going to die in this physical death. In this physical death. We are going, the body's going back to dirt. And then we're going to you know, open that casket up or dig me up when I'm gone. All they're going to see is a pile of dirt. That's all they got there. That, that's it. That I'm going to die. But I believe, and it's me, I believe I'm going to live according to God's word because I'm a spiritual being now. And I can apply the spiritual benefits of his word, which his word is spirit. I believe that I'm a vessel and I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. I believe that the Holy Ghost dwell here. I believe that the Holy Ghost is going to maintain and watch over me and keep it. And when it's time for me to go, I'm just going to go to sleep. That's how I believe. I'm not going to lose my mind because I'm going to stay in the word of God. See, I'm going to be in my right mind. I'm not going to have no sickness and need where no, I, mean, I, I don't know what's going on. I believe this. That I'm going to be just like Abraham. I'm going to be like that David. The eyes get dim. It's time. I'm not going to be in no pain. I'm, not, I'm just going to go on to sleep and be with my Lord. That's me, my belief. Because he takes care of me. Because I want to be, I want him to be glorified in him all the way to my death. I want him to get glory out of my life. And I want them to look, man, look. He, he's, he's, look at that. He ain't nothing wrong. He's just going to go to sleep. That's how I believe. But I believe that, and, I, and, and for that to happen, I got to stay in his word. I got to seek him dead. I got to know what God is taxing me to do. I got to do what God asks me to do. I got to trust God in now that I'm going to have eternal life. But I got to live according to his word. I can't live what Ray want to do. Because Ray don't want to, I ain't going to study this with me. I, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to go and do what everybody else is doing. I'm, I'm, make, I'm good. I, I just ask God to forgive me. I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. I, yeah, you take the guy. I know I got to make it in here, saints. I got to live according to this word. <laughs> I got to make it in. And I believe God's word. I believe every word in here. And, 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 and at first, I didn't understand why they put these words here and there, and they got these different translations and all this. But these words mean, mean life to me. And I believe every word is put in the right place. If it says trouble, trouble, that, that word is in there and for reason. How, what is it? Let me read this. this chapter. Who cometh to us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. I'm just reading it. I believe that all that was written the way God wanted it to write. That's what I'm trying to say. And it's for my benefit. I look my with one word in there, and it means a whole lot to me. Might not mean nothing, but a whole lot to me. I believe God's word, saints. I believe it. And Peter, let, let me tell you something. That I, did, I was in while well, I also was in that fact. Let me show you. Let me show you something I just read. This is a, nick, a nugget for y'all. This is a nugget. First Peter, third verse. First chapter, third verse. Uh, I, I'm reading that and God just, it just, man. Let me say, first Peter, 
chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God of our and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, to y'all just read that? Okay, I understand. Okay. Uh, but you know what the Holy Ghost gave me? The word has begotten us again. And God said, Holy Spirit, I've begotten you again. Now that made me think, wait a minute, when was I first begotten? I had the Holy Ghost had to just minister to it and then God just this ain't my first go around with God. God, I was with God before I came here. Because he knew me before, before the foundation of the earth. I was in a place with God that he knew me. And now, because man fell, because Adam did that stupid stuff and he did in the garden, man fell. Now Jesus Christ came and brought us back. And now he said, because he has begotten us again. My God, hallelujah. Man, that means something to me. To my father, ha, my God, how loves me. He loves me. He loves me. And he loves you too also. But I believe the word. I believe this word. It's little things like that. Now, you might not get an understanding of that, but it means something to me through the Holy Ghost minister to me. If you're seeking God in his word, like he tells you to, these little things, God will speak to you the same way. Give you little things. To just encourage you in your spiritual walk with him. Praise God. Uh, uh, right. We'll pick up. I got, I got to get in James. I haven't gotten into James yet. I haven't gotten over there. Matthew or Mark. Man. Or oh, John. Hallelujah. <laughs> Elder Prophet, yes. go ahead. I'll throw your hand up. Eight, go ahead. Romans 829. Eight. For eight. whom he did foreknow. What? 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 Uh, Romans what chapter? Eight. What book? Romans 8. Oh, okay. Yes. 29. For whom he foreknew. <laughs> he also predestinated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go ahead. No, nah, but, the, but the, that's see, it's things like that you got to read for yourself. People can tell you this, but when you get an understanding from the Holy Ghost, whom He foreknew, <laughs> whom He predestinated, <laughs> it, it ain't like, like, uh, like we say all the time. It ain't no accident I came through this bloodline that I came through. It was this is how I came, and I'm here now. To, I got once I got born again, I have purpose in my life, and God reestablished me again and said, "Boom! This is what I, this is what you always I wanted you to do." That's why there's a, a, a your your spirit and your soul can relate to the Holy Spirit. That's why because it's peaceful there. Because we. <laughs> When Jesus left heaven, he 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 was glad to get back to heaven. <laughs> he, 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 this was not his word. That's why he tells us we just traveling through here. We just pilgrims on our journey, ambassadors for God. Just going on through. They gotta have the love of God. It's gotta be obedient to God and be to His word. Study this word, saints. This word, I, I believe, if you ask any of these elders on here or any spider, this word will never lead you wrong. The word of God will have everything that you need, and in every situation, this word of God will give you the answer. And when you get the answer, you got to walk by faith in applying it to that word. Just as you said, you want a salvation, you want to accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, by faith, you got to know that you believe it in your heart and confess it out of your mouth. Confessing out of your mouth and not believing it in your heart, you ain't did nothing. You just went through emotion. There must be a change in your life for you to claim salvation. You cannot stay the same. You cannot continue walking in sin, practicing sin, loving sin. This should be something that don't your desire got to be more than what you got. 
And if Elder Proctor and Elder Wright got anything? Nobody? All right. Elder Wright? I was <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of one thing um that you said earlier that uh, many uh, saints um they leave the faith because they don't believe in the word and they they there and I was just I was just reading uh, Romans eight and verse thirteen where it says for ye for for if ye live after the flesh ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, right. but ye have received the spirit of adoption, wherefore, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. When we have that, you know, that, that knowledge of the word and the and knowing that God is the word, and we have that relationship, you can't leave that. You you can't you can't leave that. Is there something there that connects you, that makes you cry out to God? There's something there that hold that makes you hold on. So when you uh uh, uh want to leave and not it trust in the word, there was something that was was missing from the, from the get go. If you if you understand what I'm saying, go ahead. Uh, I see you, Ella Proctor. Because of the father. Because of your father, you know, if you know your father, you're connected. If you're born again, you're part of him. And you can't just walk away from him. You can't walk away from your daddy. You know, I I, I, I guess I'm, salvation comes by hearing. You got to hear the word, not the letter. Right, not the letter. But the word, the living word, the whole, the spirit of God got to speak to your spirit. And when you hear him, hallelujah, God, your eyes become wide open. <laughs> your mind is enlightened. And you say, this thing is real. God is real. When God is real with you, you can't question him. When dad, when your when your children, hallelujah, God, when you're with your children, and they're not going to question you. They say, dad, I go upside my head. When God is real, you know that God is almighty and you hear his voice you say yes lord yes lord hallelujah whatever you say lord whatever you say lord i, I know I, i'm lacking in faith i know but lord help me help me that i can walk on water help me that i can speak to a sycamore tree help me i can lay hands on somebody and you heal them hallelujah God. too many people say they're saved but they ain't heard nobody all they hear preachers preaching, hallelujah, but they ain't hearing the word of God coming through them. And a lot of preachers preaching, they ain't got the word of God in them. They're just preaching what they know. And 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 and, and just playing any kind of old music, and people, they lack music. Don't say a the word. young generation, they, they attracted to the loud music. Yes. And, yes. and never get the word of God in them that tell them that there's a difference in life. And, and the preachers I'm preaching, that that people are uh, missing heaven because of some junk. Uh, yes. Because they, the church looks like and is uh, acting like the world act. Amen. And God is is is, is uh, totally <laughs> everything in this Bible. You can't do it. And as one of the thing uh, uh, Apostle preached on, and it's still, ringing still in my spirit that. The parents are going to be held accountable for not telling their children what's right and what's wrong, and and and, and co-sign and go along with all this foolishness out here in the world, and because he blesses with those children, and we're going to be accountable for not teaching to what is right and what is wrong, and not being an example of what this world is, so that they don't go with. Amen. Every wind of doctrine to come around. They got to know. They got to know this word is true. And you cannot. And anybody professing that they are um, born again and their lifestyle and they desire the same things of the world is going opposite of what the, the Bible says. That opposite 
of what the word of God say. So there's a conflict there. And uh, you need to figure out why am I loving the world, the ways of the world, more than I love the ways of God. There's a conflict. You are in you you like what you used to do in life, but you want to look like you are saved, you want to act like you say, but you still want to go to the world, you still want to do the things of the world. You better okay. check. You're neglecting uh this greatest salvation and elder right. They're neglecting, don't neglect. <laughs> Such a great salvation. <laughs> hey, amen. <laughs> now, look, you're gonna find yourself in the wrong situation. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. And can't get out. And can't, and ain't no, there is no escape once you're there. All right. That, that man down there right now, he's still there. Yeah. The one that asked ask him to dip the finger to, in the water, he's still down there. <laughs> How many years it went by? It, 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 <laughs> the gift, the gift, it's a gift. It's a gift, and, and people don't believe it. I, you know, every time I think about how we, the line, everybody got no Santa Claus. And when you tell them that God loves them, Jesus loves you and he died for you, and you can tell them all day long. Jesus have to tell them. You didn't tell them all day long. Listen. And never mind, let me be quiet. I think. Yeah, yes, all right, you wanted to close this out? Uh, yes, sir. Father God, heaven, we just thank you again, Father, for your word. We thank you for the teachings that you have brought for us on today, Father. That we hear it and God and do it and be obedient, oh God, and put it into action, your word, oh God. These these lessons that have been brought forth that we are putting it into action, not just be hearers, but doers of it, Father. We ask you to touch everyone on the sound of my voice, Father. Touch everyone that will watch this later, Father, that they move by your power and by your might, Father, because we know it's by your spirit that we are able to do it, Father. We ask you, oh God, come against, oh God, sickness and disease right now, because it's not of you, Father. We glorify you and we magnify you, Father. Oh God, if we go off, do the rest of this week, Father, that we will put you first, Father, in our hearts and in our minds. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Be blessed.